$1,000 to zero millions, but there are various techniques. I won't cry, try and go in detail. I just want to give you some thoughts about the various methods you can use to try and determine what a package costs. Cost method. This is the easiest to determine because you can tell what it costs you to get that package. How much RD time, how many years, uh, what it took to go through the whole process of the patent application itself. And you can <coughs> talk to your accountant and figure that out. The problem with it is most people on the other side will say, so what? You sunk that money. That's not what it's worth to me. It's worth to me this based on a different analysis. So the cost method is something people feel good about because they have the information, but too often the person on the other side of the table will say, it's not valid in this situation. Then there's the income method, trying to find how much this technology could potentially generate for the buying company, the licensor company, or whatever. And the unfortunate thing about this is it takes many assumptions about what you're going to make on that technology. And if you don't have a product in the marketplace, this is all loose cotton. It's all what you've been able to conjecture. And there's what, no way of validating. So it's a very difficult way to have financial types try and find this number. But unless they've got hard figures to review and audit, they throw up their hands and I can't create this. They it. You can for a product that's already in the market. And somebody like P&G who's taking product from Japan, bringing it to the US, introducing it to the US market, they can do that because already it's in a marketplace. It has sales, it has revenues. You know what the costs are. But most often on every audit technology coming out of a university and around here out of a small startup, you're not going to have this. Thing. Running royalties work well with this because if you're going to share in the revenues that are generated. And I think it's a, what we call a back end deal because it's only based on after a product is in the market, you're going to make revenue. On front payments, which many people would love to get cash right now, it's going to be difficult to generate if you don't have any you can show where that money's coming. Some big drug companies, however, if you can convince them you've got the new blockbuster drug and it's already gone through phase three testing, will pay huge amounts in upfront. And we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars to get access to that drug if they need new drugs in their Market method. This used to be one when there was an active IP market, IPO market that we could use as analogs for what a technology would be worth. worth. Last year, when there were, I think, five IPOs of technology companies, it's not so good anymore. There really aren't enough analogous types of transactions that there is information about that you can create a good analog method to look at what the market would pay for technology. So th this one, to me, is a little bit in the state of just because the iPhone the market just collapsed. Now, what's happened in years, because we've become a very litigious society, Litigation method is what's happening where the courts determine. You go in, you sue somebody for infringing your technology, present the court with the information of all the revenues you've lost by somebody else using it, or what it should be valued going into the product line, and it's determined either by negotiation on the courthouse steps, or determination by a judge or a jury trial. Again, only two to three thousand of these going on at any time, so it's a relatively minor.